When privacy experts Facebook, aka Meta, decided to make glasses with a camera inside, yo, I knew I had to check them out. They're actually super dope, but they have some major concerns that I want to point out. So are the Meta Ray-Bans worth it? Let's find out. This is Supreme Value where I use a rating system slash formula to determine whether a product is worth it or not numerically. I give a word rating that corresponds to a number and a tier for four categories. Those categories are priority, price, features, and quality. Those numbers are then averaged out to give a value score, starting with quality. The case that comes with the Ray-Bans feels really nice. It's synthetic leather on the outside and suede on the inside and provides decent protection, but I would have preferred a more rugged hard shell type of case since these aren't just normal sunglasses and I have a camera on them. I could see these being dropped and then there being enough force for these to hit the ground and open up and come out of the case. In terms of the build quality and design, you get the classic and reliable Wayfarer design. These have become somewhat of an industry standard for sunglasses, and the Meta Wayfarers are pretty much the same. When you wear these, they aren't heavy. I feel like most people would not think there's a camera and speaker inside. The temples have a little bit more width, but it doesn't bring too much discomfort, and you wouldn't really be able to tell these from the normal Wayfarer glasses unless directly comparing them. I would say I did feel a little fatigue after like two hours, but that might just be because I'm not used to wearing glasses which is such a privilege. I have the base model lens, but you can also get a polarized lenses which have better eye protection, transition lenses, or just blue light lenses. Even the base model has solid eye protection, again probably why they have become well established and reputable. In terms of battery, they have about a 3-4 to four hour battery life of constant usage from listening to music, asking questions, and taking photos and videos, but the case can charge it 8 more times, so with the case, I mean battery for me was really absolutely no problem. The camera. The camera is actually surprisingly great. When I started using this, I was like, hold up. Like, I didn't process that. They're a hands-free camera. Essentially, it's like a super lightweight GoPro on your head, which is the ideal first-person point of view without looking weird either. And the video quality is smooth and clear. The 12 megapixel lens has a wide angle, so it captures a lot of your perspective. It's also fantastic in direct sunlight. All videos are in portrait. I mean, technically, you can do landscape, but yeah, they're definitely going for a certain Instagram posting demographic here. While the video is a bit overstabilized, it's also really smooth considering it's trying to compute in live time our head movements, but your sudden jerks definitely do make the video stutter. There isn't any depth of field when you get up close to subjects, which is unfortunate but understandable. It also takes a second to lag when you take a picture, which is something to note. The audio on here is actually really good. I would say these are really good for taking phone calls, but still not as good as my iPhone 12 mini. The reliable stylish design, pretty comfortable frame, long lasting battery, surprisingly stable camera, I give these a B for great quality. When I first heard the speakers, I was like, whoa, these are impressive. I did not expect that kind of bass. These surprisingly have some kind of oomph into their sound. Like, these offer good enough sound quality to casually enjoy music, podcasts, and like when you realize the sound is coming from your glasses, it's a vibe. The directional audio does a decent job with sound leakage, but if you're in a quiet area, people will definitely be able to hear your music. Meta AI. Meta's very own AI is integrated within these glasses. AI is more than a voice assistant in the sense that you can ask it situational questions rather than just for information. So in theory, it should be more useful, but to be honest, I couldn't really naturally find use cases for it. But it's actually fascinating how well it can process natural language and respond in a pretty concise manner. When I asked if everyone should get Meta Ray-Bans, it said, no, everyone may not benefit from them equally and Ray-Bans are best suited for people seeking advanced tech. There were a few times that it did make me wait and just not respond, but here are some of the questions I asked if you want to pause the video and read the responses. Meta AI is really solid, though I wish it was integrated more with my phone so I could have asked it questions like, what's my day looking like? Something to note is that while a voice AI makes it fun because it's just like talking to someone, for extended answers, I would say a chatbot may be preferred just because you can either skim through a long answer or copy and paste responses, which I think they will eventually bring to some meta apps. Something they're also bringing is Meta's look and see feature. When I saw that the beta was out for this, I was like pretty excited to test this feature out only to quickly realize it was not at all like drivers from Iron Man. Obviously, I was dumb to have that expectation, but the way it works is you say the keywords, hey Meta, look and da 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 da, and then it takes a picture and tries to respond to your question, except most of the time it can't. 
I mean, it can make simple observations, identify plants and certain objects and tell you a general summary of the photo, which is actually really impressive. But I have to say answers to the questions that I would think to ask an AI I have right by my side rely more on comprehensive visual processing, which isn't really what meta AI is really capable of now. It's definitely still in its early stages of being able to visually analyze real life with its camera, but it does make me pretty excited as to what the future could look like. A surprisingly great speed pretty neat meta AI that has room for improvement. I give it a C for good features. The price is really interesting. I want to talk about just the regular Ray-Ban Wayfair glasses, the non-meta ones, just to make a quick point. So the standard Wayfarers are roughly around $200. I think there's two groups of people here. There's a, oh yeah, Ray-Bans are $200. That's not too bad and they are worth it group. There must be a huge crowd in this group, obviously, because they have rose to the forefront. Now on the flip side, there's a group of people like me that are like, Ray-Bans are $200? Yo, heck no. My sunglasses are $20 from TJ Maxx and just as good. Okay, maybe not just as good, but you know what I mean. So for me, Ray-Bans, just the non-smart ones are already too expensive in my opinion. I feel like a good price for the regular ones would be around like $100. But with the Meta Ray-Bans, they're $300. So that first group of people might be like, oh yeah, for $100 more, you get a nice hands-free camera, solid speakers, and Meta AI? Worth it. But for me, maybe if the base price of non-smart Ray-Bans were around $100 and then the Meta Ray-Bans were around $200, I wouldn't think the price is too bad, but they're $300. I think the cost of the camera, AI, and speakers is around $100. But wait, my final and most important point, these Meta Ray-Bans aren't $300, really, they're $400. Why? Because you have to get the transitional lenses. Let me explain. So the main incentive of buying these is for the camera, I would think. Now, a lot of first person point of view camera angles are used in fast motion, which is why GoPros are so popular. But these Meta Ray-Bans are loosely on your face and not strapped in like a GoPro. And we all know glasses be falling off all the time when in high motion. So I would say you shouldn't use these primarily for fast motion video capture, but rather more casual speeds. What is casual? Exactly. So many casual things are not in the sun. For example, like cooking or even going to a concert with these would be fire. You don't have to hold your phone up. These are so perfect for so many indoor shots, but who's wearing sunglasses indoors? Exactly. Nobody. So like for me, half of my shots, I was wearing sunglasses inside and I was like so annoyed. They do have just like a blue light version or a prescribed version, but like to me, I don't wear glasses. So it's like kind of a waste for me to buy these for blue light glasses in a camera. Like if I were to buy these for myself, I would buy these 70% for the camera, but still like 30% for the fact that they're sunglasses. There's just too many moments I feel like for people that want to buy these would want to use indoors in which it only makes sense to get the transitional ones. So I would say if the price for the transitional glasses were like 250, I would give these a good price, but they aren't, they're $400. So for me personally, I'm sorry, I had to give these an F for a bad price. To me, these are expensive for what they are worth. So I don't really wear sunglasses. I don't know, I am in the sun, but like, I think I just like the freedom of not having to wear anything on my face over having eye protection. Now during the summer, there are times where like, you know you legit need sunglasses, but for me, that's where my hat or my $20 sunglasses come in. And that's probably only like five times a year. I really just prefer to have my face free, that's all. Now these are different though, right? They have a camera. Can I make use of this camera? Definitely, because I shoot videos, right? And having these as a first person point of view portrait hands-free video camera is a huge selling point. But for me, while I could make use of it, I really just don't need it. At least with the videos that I make, they definitely would add flavor, but stylistically, it really isn't an angle that I particularly am looking to capture. And so for all that I have, for priority, I have to be honest with myself and put this in the D category for mid priority. All right, normally I average out the scores here, but I'm gonna have to mention just a bunch of annoying or concerning things about these that just don't make sense. Each time you take a photo or video, you have to import the photos onto your phone. And then every time you do that, for some reason, you have to join Meta's own Wi-Fi, huh? Yo, sus. But then I found a setting to automatically import the photos, but in order to turn that setting on, Meta needs your location at all times? Huh? Why would they need to access my location to import photos? That is sus. And then, even after I turned it on, it still didn't even work, so I ended up having to manually upload in which I had to join the Meta Wi-Fi each time. That's just so weird to me. And for the camera, 
There's a 60 second limit for videos, so if you want to capture something longer, you're going to have to keep pressing the button again and again. And there's a feature where you can tap and hold the right side to directly play Spotify. So I was like, yo, word Spotify is directly integrated. But then when I say, hey Meta, play Mr. Chu by A-Pink, it says, it can't. What? I thought it was integrated. But then again, Siri can do that. But of course you can't use Hey Siri or whatever native voice assistant you have on your phone with your Meta glasses. You can only use Siri directly to your phone, but not the microphone within your meta glasses. It would be nice to be able to use Siri through your meta glasses when it can't do stuff that's more integrated with your phone. And if you lose these, you are indeed screwed. I feel like sunglasses are often lost and it's quite unfortunate that these don't have a GPS in them. Another thing is the LED on the outside is white and it is not red. This is 100% a strategic and intentional decision and I'm sure that there was a debate about it. Making the light red for sure shouts out, hey everyone, I'm recording, which is a lot more intimidating and feels kind of intrusive for the people being recorded, but it much more clearly allows everyone around you know that you're being recorded. Knowing this, they chose to make the light white, which definitely allows people to be more slick with recording, which again comes back to meta being kind of sus. And lastly, the thing about AI is it needs your data to become better. So basically remember that meta, AKA Facebook is always storing what you say into their database. A company with a history of privacy issues has a product with a camera and is always listening to you. Just make sure to consider that. And for all those reasons I mentioned, I'ma have to give an inaugural minus one. So if I add all the scores and average it out, I get a whopping value score of 0.25, which is an all time low value score for the products I've reviewed at bad value. And I mean, I, I have to agree personally for me, these don't really have any value for me. I think it's a cool product. I just don't find many use cases for them. And I feel like they aren't worth the price and don't feel comfortable recording people with them. And I'm sure plenty would agree. Now, who exactly are these for? Cause clearly I'm not part of the target demographic. Well, obviously these scream influencer, right? I mean, the videos are literally only in portrait. So is it worth it for them? Well, I would think it comes down to the price and the two groups I mentioned earlier. If you think normal Ray-Bans are worth it for $200, you might give these a good rating. And since you might focus on this kind of first person view content, the priority to you might be great. So with those people, the value rating might be more so of a 3.25 at good value. And for, but to be honest, I feel like this demographic is really small. So I would say even for people that might not be an influencer type, but think that normal Ray-Bans are at a good price, I would think that they would give these more of a 2.5 at mid value. For the vast majority of people, I would agree these will be either mid to bad value. They are cool though, so if you really want them, you should definitely check them out. Just keep in mind the minus one stuff I mentioned. All right, and this video was sponsored by me. I bought these. In the spirit of Christmas, I'm hoping to encourage people to help serve a community that really needs support. If you feel uncomfortable giving food to homeless people on the street, this is a great way to easily and systematically support the homeless community, especially for the local people in Raleigh and Durham. The DRM has a fire thrift store. They are one of the oldest and largest long-term homeless shelters in Durham and provide counseling, job placement, and much more. So my goal is to get 10 people to donate $10. And once my goal is met, I will randomly select the giveaway winner to anyone that comments their Instagram like this, regardless of if they donated or not. Also, everyone that participates in one of my fundraisers will forever cement their names in the Supreme Value Universe. We have some new neighbors as well as some people building on their house. SVU Mayor has also installed some pathways for easier access to other neighbors. Overall, we have raised around $500 w let's go thank you again for everyone for supporting me homeless in durham and the drm all right what did you think of my value score was it whack am i cheap let me know in the comments peace